Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian, Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. So next Saturday, February the 10th is Lunar New Year. And as 2024 is the year of the dragon, we are bringing you a selection of films and television series recommendations all about the mighty dragon. So while Eastern and Western dragons have very different sort of folklore behind them, we are just sort of sticking to the basic tenant of dragons are cool uh, as far as today's recommendations go. Uh, there will also be a week that just features uh, non-dragon Asian-centric film, but I just thought it might be fun to take a slightly different spin on things this year. Uh, so yeah, we are going to recommend a number of titles all featuring dragons. I'm very excited about this week. Um, it was so much fun putting these together. So anyway, as always, all of the recommendations you hear today are available for, to you completely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin Library card. So without any further ado, Let's get to the Dragon Rex. Okay, my very first recommendation is actually a bit of a twofer, and that is because it's for both a film and a TV series based on a book by Michael Ende that came out in 1979, and that's The Never Ending Story. Now, the film of The Never Ending Story is available on both DVD and Blu ray via our Clevenet service. And this is one of those absolutely enduring movies for me. It also recently saw a resurgence in popula uh, popularity due to a brief musical appearance in the Stranger Things TV series on Netflix. Um, but I digress. Never Ending Story came out in 1984. It is one of those movies that I have loved my entire life. I watched it when I was a kid and thought it was fantastic. And even several decades down the line, I still love this movie. It's There's just something so appealing about it. Uh, and a lot of films that I think most of us go back and watch that we liked when we were kids, they don't really stand the test of time. But for me, this one really, really does. Even with the very dated special effects, there's something about a really well done quest story that just is magic. Um, and I do love the way that it sort of manages to bookend its way into the present day. So when we open up with the film, we are following a young boy named Bastion. He is definitely dealing with issues with bullies. Um, in order to avoid these bullies one day, he ducks into a bookshop and he comes across this book. And something about this book just pulls him in right from the minute he sees it. And he sort of steals away with the novel. And when he opens it to read it, he just figuratively gets pulled into this story about a young man named Atreyu who is called upon to quest to save an entire realm from the villain of the piece. The villain is called the darkness and it's quite nebulous within this uh, setting, but it's still terrifying. And, and it was scary when I was a kid and it's still incredibly unnerving as an adult to think of the nothingness. And as you get older, obviously like the nothingness has this sort of, malevolent, nebulous nature that is even more scary than when you're a child, but it, it, it really does, it really does make an incredibly effective monster, uh, in the particular story. Um, I really think that the adventure and the aspect, uh, the adventure aspect of this particular film is one that will appeal to both children and adults. Uh, it's also great for people who just love like classic fantasy. There's so many tropes that are really well done uh, because tropes are there for a reason, right? They, they resonate with people and when they're poorly done or just sort of like, ha like slapped together uh, just to finish a piece off, uh, then it's that's when it becomes terrible and um, tropey. But when they are done really, really well to the maximum of what they were intended to do, that's when they just become sort of classic elements of a tale. And that's really what we have here in this movie. Um, the acting is excellent. Uh, we have moments of real like harrowing danger. Uh, so it's not sort of 
everything is always automatically going to be okay. There's really, there are real consequences, especially when facing the villain of this piece. Uh, and, and I just really, really loved that part of it that, that we weren't always assured of a happily ever after, because then if you're already automatically certain that that's going to happen, none of the danger or the difficulty that the hero faces, even as a kid, it, it doesn't make sense. So why put him through all this if everything's just going to be fine at the end? Anyhow, um, I, I did really, really appreciate that. And I, and again, I still do. Uh, the animated series came out in 1995 and it originally aired on HBO. I will say that the animation itself, certainly not on par with today's animation, but the storylines themselves are really actually pretty solid. Uh, the animated series of The NeverEnding Story is available through our Canopy service. And since it's part of the Kids Unlimited program, you don't use up any of your uh, monthly tickets when watching. So feel free to let the kids have a, a happy day of binge watching if you would like, or if you just want to check it out yourself. It's actually, like I said, storyline wise, quite solid. Um, and again, that is available through Canopy. Uh, so overall, I definitely 100% would recommend the original film. It did spawn a couple of sequels, not the best, uh, but the original film and that animated series are both full of really good storylines. So highly, highly, highly recommended. Make sure you check it out, uh, either the film via Clevenet or the animated series on Canopy. All right, my next recommendation is available to stream and download via our Hoopla service, and that is 2015's I Am Dragon. So I, let me preface this by saying this is a subtitled film. Original language is in Russian, but it's totally worth it, especially if you happen to love like really classic epic fantasy tales. This one is just, it's a lot of fun. It's not super complex, but there are some subtle twists and it's just a really well put together movie. I really, really had a lot of fun while watching it. So when we open the movie, we are witness to this really big epic wedding ceremony. And you can tell right from the get go that there's a lot of tradition behind it. We meet uh, our heroine of the piece, Princess Miroslava. She is on this tiny little boat being pulled across a lake to who a, a young handsome man we can only assume is her new husband and prince um just as she is being pulled in to shore a dragon swoops in picks her up and steals her away she is kidnapped from her wedding feast celebration and that's that's how things start and it, it's just kind of a, a, a bit of an epic roller coaster ride from there. When she comes to, she's in this stone cage, in, uh, trapped on an island, completely isolated. And the only other person she has there is a young man who she also believes is a prisoner of the dragon named Arman. And they begin to bond and develop this relationship, and and they come to know one another. and And it's really quite interesting to see them learning each other and their background and their stories. And there's just a lot going on in this, a lot of like really classic storyline, uh, fairy tale elements. Um, you see bits and pieces of classic dragon fighting tales, but you also see pieces of like Beauty and the Beast uh, to the, to some, to some degree. And and I thought it was really fun how they spun all of these different stories that I think most of us might have familiarity with into one very cohesive storyline. Um, it does pull from Norse mythology a little bit, some Scandinavian legend too, which I really enjoy. I'm a, a big fan of um, Nordic legend. And so I was picking pieces of that. And then I'm less familiar with Russian uh, mythology. But then as I finished watching the film, I started looking into that too. So they're just pulling things from all over the place. So one would expect it to feel a bit like cacophonous and like it, you wouldn't think that it would fit all together, but it really, really does. Uh, and it's quite a, a, a lovely fairy tale. It, there's, there's definitely some serious darkness within it. And and, and it's, it's not like light, lightly dark. It's like, there's some pretty epic moments. Uh, and there's some really great, um, 
scenes of romance and it's it's just everything you want in a fantasy story uh i am not at all surprised that when it came out it ended up being russia's like highest grossing film Yes, it was the highest grossing Russian film at the international box office in 2016. Uh, and that comes as no surprise after watching it. The, the special effects were really well done. The acting was quite lovely, too. Uh, I really liked the young woman who played the Princess Miroslava. I'd not seen her in anything before, but I am I'm not I'm less familiar with Russian cinema, so... I, that that doesn't surprise me that I don't know her, but I 100% have every intention of going back and looking for some of her other films if I'm able to get them, uh, because she does a great job in here. Um, this was loosely based on a book uh, by Marina and Sergei Yachenko. I might be butchering that name, uh, which came out in 1996. The novel was called The Ritual. And I definitely am going to go check out the book because I, I'm curious if all of the bits and pieces uh, that came and put were put together so well for this film are all present in the original source as well. Uh, and it is it does describe it as very loosely based. So who knows? But it was the the fact is the movie was good enough to get me to really want to search out the novel and see how they compare. So, yeah, if you're looking for a really fun a uh, very epic, beautiful romance along with a dragon tale with lots of adventure and action. Make sure you check out I Am Dragon on Hoopla. Definitely worth the time and an absolute must watch. Okay, my last recommendation for today is um, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek one. It's available to stream on Canopy and is 1981's Dragon Slayer. So, Dragon Slayer has become one of those cult favorite films. Uh, people watch it with a nod towards nostalgia. And I absolutely see why. I definitely saw this when I was a kid and thought it was really entertaining. And now even as an adult, I do find it quite entertaining, but maybe not 100% in the way I was intended to. So in Dragon Slayer, we are dealing with a kingdom that is having unbelievable difficulties with this dragon that is terrorizing the land. Uh, in order to appease the dragon, it is regularly sacrificed young women. So obviously the citizens of this land want that to stop. Uh, and so representatives from the kingdom go to seek this very famous wizard named Ulrich, uh, who decides immediately, yes, I am going to help defeat the dragon. Unfortunately, he is very quickly removed from the situation and his assistant, uh, played by Peter McNichol, suddenly becomes the hero of the story. He has to be the one to pick up the uh, quest to defeat this incredibly terrifying dragon. Uh, and, and there are moments of comedy which make absolute sense within this and but they're also it's it's also played very seriously so as a viewer I'm not sure if the campy elements are intended to be campy but they are and they're thoroughly enjoyable uh there are a lot of tropes in here it is a bit of a tropey mess as far as like saving the damsel like young unexpected man sent off on a quest evil villainous overlords, um, shady evil practices within these young sacrifices. I mean, th like everything that is a trope within the fantasy dragon element that you could imagine is in here. Uh, and it's not all like perfectly crafted. They're clearly trying to make a more epic film than what we get, but it's still ridiculously fun. Uh, it's it's so fun that I have definitely watched this with friends on more than one occasion. And we like love picking this film apart. It's, it's just, it's just ridiculous enough to be like an exceptionally good time to watch with friends. Um, and that said, the acting is really solid. They have put together a very good cast full of, uh, British character actors who you've seen in many other things who are also ret veterans of the stage. Peter McNichol is an incredible actor. He's still a, 
working character actor today it's just very fun to sort of see him thrust into this role of the hero which i suppose is the point um the special effects are certainly special effects from the 80s but they're serviceable again it's it's one of those movies that shouldn't really work but kind of does and and i really enjoy it <laughs> every time i've watched it and i've watched it more than once I have a good time. It, it really, it's, it really is one of those sort of like nods to nostalgia that just, just managed to work. Um, I did find a really funny anecdote about Peter McNichol begging people not to watch this movie in recent years. He's like, please don't, please don't. It, Cause it's such a cult classic. People always talk, want to talk to him about it. He's like, oh, of all the things <laughs> that you want to talk. Cause he has a brilliant, brilliant set of work like his filmography is incredible i mean he has won many 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 acting awards and so i can absolutely understand being so frustrated that this is the piece that people most remember him for but at the same time there's a reason for it like it, it is a memorable movie um, I wouldn't say it's like so bad it's good kind of situation because it's not because they're really very they're elements that are quite well done and I don't want to sell it as a so bad it's good film but it is funny that this of everything is is his um is is his sort of touchstone um another really interesting um point about this one is that it originally was made by uh, it was a joint project by Paramount and Disney and so there was I guess a bit of controversy about the Disney factor and Disney connection because this is quite dark so it is very tropey it is really re traditional fantasy in that it's got some pretty dark elements that one would not have expected to see in a Disney associated 1980s movie at all. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's real death and there are real villains who are doing incredibly shady things. Uh, and there are some like pretty violent scenes, uh, that on reflection, I suppose it had, I been really cognizant, cognizant of that connection to Disney, I would have been fairly surprised that this was a Disney movie in some respects. So yeah, I, I absolutely get the controversy and it's kind of a fun, additional layer to, to throw on top of this. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for like a really classic kind of fantasy with loads of tropes, with a pretty typical storyline, boy saves a girl and saves the kingdom at the same time kind of thing, but with very good acting, like very, very good acting, uh, that's got some camp to it that has like some really, really fun elements. The score is really good. I will say the score is excellent. Uh, I think it was actually even nominated for Academy Award. It lost to like Chariots of Fire of all things at the time, but like, it, it wasn't, it was quite a phenomenal score. Um, if you're looking for, for good music, all of those things put together, make sure you check out Dragon Slayer. If you remember watching it in the 80s and you haven't seen it since, 100,000% make sure you check it out because like I mentioned, the nostalgia factor is so strong with this one. Uh, so yeah, again, available on Canopy to stream, 1981's Dragon Slayer. Definitely check it out. Okay, so those were my main recommendations for Dragon Week. If you have recommendations for dragon-centric movies that you would like to share with us, please pop those below. There are so, so many that I wanted to add in here. Spirited Away, massive, massive one. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Like, they're just, they're just a ton. So if you want to share any of your opinions, pop those in the comments. If you want to share opinions on what we should uh, focus on for topics in the future, Future, definitely share those ideas. Always looking for help there. Um, as always, thank you so, so much for checking out this video. It's always so much fun to delve into our catalog and to be able to pick out recommendations for everybody. So it's a blast for me and I appreciate everyone who takes time to watch these little videos of ours. Uh, so again, thank you for joining me and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye.